Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Welcome to St. Michael's. Um, Sarah and Kelvin are on holiday, or a short break this weekend, well deserved, as I'm sure we'll all agree. So I hope they have a nice, nice weekend. Um, a couple of short notices. Um, following the sad passing of Frank Warren, uh, Sarah did ask if anybody had any recollections or anecdotes about his life to send them to Sarah so that they can be included later in his eulogy by his family. So if you could uh, bear that in mind, that'd be helpful. The Zoom prayer meeting is on Tuesday, the monthly meeting at 7.30. Again, please email Sarah if you're going to be taking part. That would be wonderful to have you. Just to let you know that the Archdeacon has stressed regarding the uh, incumbent search process that the church wardens and other members who are aware of the process or what's going on should not be giving out any information for sake of confidentiality. So just to let you know, we won't be able to give you any updates if we know of them, of what's going on. There will be a full interview process later on, obviously that uh, certain members of the PCC and the diocese will be taking part, but it is confidential. So the Archdeacon asked us to maintain that confidentiality, but please do, pray for that process. It's very important that we find the right priest at the right time, and we'd be grateful if you can support that through your prayers. Um, there's no Monday Bible study this week. The Thursday one is still on, as I understand. And finally, but by no means least, we welcome again Michael Dunk uh, for coming and worshiping and leading our worship with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. It's good to be back amongst you again. I think this picture must be one uh, Kelvin sent of his holidays, uh, enjoying time on the beach, perhaps some sunny place. Portugal, perhaps? Maybe not. Um, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Our opening hymn is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to say the glory together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A colleague for today, Trinity Sunday. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. Today's reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but is not, it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. You did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Our second traditional Trinitarian hymn is, I bind unto myself today.
Good morning, everyone. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter the second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the man, Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you o, o Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the hour is late and the streets are dark in Jerusalem. There's a warm summer breeze that cuts into the lingering heat from the day. Why is this night different from any other? For one man it would be. He's winding through the streets with a torch in his hand, walking with a particular purpose. He arrives at the house where he thinks Jesus is and knocks on the door. The last several days raised many questions and Nicodemus carries the weight of his doubts and fears through the door to see if Jesus really holds the answer. He saw John at the Jordan and heard the rumors about the sky opening up when Jesus entered into the water. 
He knows the marketplace is full of whispers about miraculous acts and challenges to traditional Jewish teaching. The world seems upside down because of this Galilean, this rabbi, this unique person who claims to be the Son of God. The reading from John's Gospel contains two well-known verses. One of the most popular, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And the other, one of the most misunderstood, you must be born again, or born from above, as some translations have it. In one of C.S. Lewis's children's books about Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, there is a boy called Eustace. He's a rather nasty boy, so nasty in fact that he turns into a dragon. Then he comes to his senses and longs to be a boy again. The trouble is he doesn't know how to. He tries to scratch off his skin with his claws, but every time he manages to peel off a layer of scales, there's another layer underneath. And then the lion Aslan says, you will have to let me do it. Eustace is afraid, but he has no other option. So he lets Aslan remove the dragon skin. Afterwards, Eustace says, the very first tear he made was so deep that I thought it had gone right through to my heart. And when he began pulling the skin off, it hurt worse than anything I'd ever felt before. Well, he peeled the beastly stuff right off and there it was lying on the grass. Then he called hold of me and threw, it into the threw me into the water. It smarted like anything, but only for a moment. After that, it became perfectly delicious. And as soon as I started swimming and splashing, I found that all the pain had gone. Then I saw why I had been turned into a boy again. Being born again may not be as dramatic as that, but being born the first time has similarities with both the pain and the joy in that story of Eustace and Aslan. The birth of a baby is probably the most dramatic change that a couple will face in their relationship. Just when life becomes predictable, along comes the unpredictable. Broken nights and the endless demands of feeding and changing soon shatter any illusion and life will continue as before. And then when number two comes along, you remember how easy it all was when you only had one. Alongside the demands of the life-changing experience of parenthood, there is the deep joy of new life with all that potential just waiting to develop. Many a mother and father has crept into the nursery in the quiet night hours, looking at their sleeping baby and wondered, what are they going to be like when they grow up? What joys and sorrows, laughter and tears will they bring? Your aspirations, your hopes, your resources are passed on to your children. Each generation builds on the success of the previous one. You hope your children will go further than you did. Your genes will be carried on and so will your attitudes, your values, your standards, carried into a world that you could only guess at. What are the attitudes, values and standards that you gave your children? Are they of real worth? Are they helping your children live a life with high ideals and contribute towards the well-being of society? When babies come into the home, we make sure the physical world around them is secure. We make sure that they are kept from harm. But do we also check the mental and spiritual values that surround them? Do we give them qualities such as high moral standards, a spirit of generosity and loyalty, sound judgment, selflessness, and above all, knowing how to love and to be loved? The ideals of parenting are set high, and I suspect most of us fail at least some of the time. There is also their spiritual surrounding that they imbibe from us. What about their relationship with God? Is it just a material world? Or is there a creator who longs for us to have new life and to have it in all its abundance? 
The term being born again has sometimes been brought into disrepute because it has been misunderstood. It was first spoken by Jesus to Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a respected religious leader of many years standing. He came to Jesus by night so as not to be seen by his peers. Perhaps he was fearful of his position in society. He saw in Jesus much to be admired. In response to Jesus saying, you must be born again, Nicodemus asked, how can a man be born in again when he is old? Nicodemus was a leader of the synagogue. He inherited a great tradition of spirituality as a Pharisee. He tested it in the cauldron of life. He conformed his life to it, measured his standards by it, even his thoughts and feelings by it. How can he break away from all this and start again? There is a tradition that this God-fearing man was baptized by Peter after Jesus' resurrection. Consequently, he would have been deprived by his own people of his status and banished from Jerusalem. The challenge that Jesus presented him with is our challenge too. Jesus asked him, and he asks us also, to wake up to a new spiritual life. He throws open the window to a new world and says, look at this new dimension, explore, launch out, be born again. We have a choice to remain in a spiritual no man's land, not to achieve our full potential or to come to new life, spiritual rebirth and to live for God. There are turning points in all our lives, times when circumstances make us change marriage, illness, unemployment, retirement, bereavement, and the arrival of a baby. At such times, it is human nature to question life, to search for elusive answers. In this process, help, encouragement, inspiration, strength, and more are needed. Nicodemus sought and found the answer, have you? Back in 1973, I was invited by Christian friends from the church my wife and I started attending to go with them to the Central Hall, Westminster in London. It was to a performance called Come Together, and it was led by Pat Boone. If you remember Love Letters in the Sand, you must be nearly as old as me. He was one of the most successful pop singers of his generation. At the end of the performance, he invited people to come up front who felt the call of God. To my surprise, I went to the front and felt an overwhelming sense of peace and that I had been accepted by God as one of his children. I had a conviction that he would guide me through life's storms. It was my born again moment. I have many exemplary friends who have not had a Damascus Road experience who live a Christ-like life. It is at times of significant change that we glimpse what life is really all about. And it is those times that Jesus challenges us. Begin again, he says, whatever age you are, just think of the potential that is still within you. Many times, not just once in our lives, he says it to us. Every day, God calls us into his presence. We should build on the ultimate realities that we've discovered, which lie deep within us. We mustn't let the moment pass by when we hear that inner call. We've all had difficult times in our lives. We bring them all before God, lay the weight of them down and ask God to help us to leave them with him and experience a form of new birth. God gives us the strength and resources to start again, to take strength from on high and go from here to gain a deeper understanding of the one to whom we will in one day return. May we be open to the new life that God offers to each and every one of us. Amen.
Please stand for the creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, sorry, in, in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sit all kneel for our intercessions. intercessions this morning were prepared by Vicky but uh, she's not able to be with us this morning let us pray to the Father through the Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit O God beyond us lead us forward to pray O God beside us teach us gently to pray O God within us still our hearts to pray Holy God beyond us, you create and sustain all things. With this in mind, may we sustain that love and respect for one another in everything we do and say, with mutual support, thoughtfulness and consideration for all. Give us the understanding to always know the correct way to treat people, even when others' actions can hurt, sadden, or anger us. Amen. Holy God beside us, you never leave us without comfort. You always walk beside us, neither too far ahead nor a step behind. We pray for those who have not noticed that you are there beside them, or for those who feel deserted. Son of God, may you hear those whose hearts cry out for help. May their tears be slowed and their fears quietened. May their suffering be eased. May the dead rise to new and eternal life free from their pain and restored forever. Amen. Holy Spirit within us, you are always seeking to fill our lives with peace and strength. May the world leaders listen with their hearts, not to seek personal power, but to act for the common good. May conflicts be faced honestly and resolutions be recognized and created. Many communities across the world be built on what is good, true, just and right. This morning, we especially remember the people of Paraguay and nearer to home, the Friends of St. Michael's Infant School and the residents of Pilgrim's Way. Amen. Holy God, we offer up our praise to you to thank you for your wondrous presence in our lives, so full of glory and love, to share the joyous knowledge of your light in our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Please stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. We just acknowledge one another's giving peace to each other. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Listen to the next hymn, Love Divine or Love's Excelling. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising has set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the bread, broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. Amen. 
On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Saint Michael and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Almighty and eternal God,
Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory. You are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our closing hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. stand for the blessing. Peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.